It was late one evening. I was in the small chapel. Uh, yeah, the, the, the carpet looked like it came from the 70s. It was this yellow shag rug. And, and there was only one other person in the chapel. There weren't any chairs in the chapel. And, and I was in the back right-hand corner. There was somebody in the left. And there was the, the picture of Jesus that was famous back then. I call it Jesus' senior picture or racquetball Jesus, that kind of Jesus with the flowing hair, huh? There was just one light in the chapel. It was just a vote of light. And it was just, it was quiet. It was peaceful. It was prayerful. And, and in the chapel, I just found myself, I was just really pouring my heart out to the Lord and pouring my heart out to him and praying. And, and I remember saying, you know, Lord, I just don't understand this. I don't understand what's going on and, and how they're different than I am. And, and I don't understand what the baptism of the Holy Spirit was. And, and I don't understand this whole charismatic, what that's all about. I was just really, honestly, just praying, and there was an authentic prayer that was, was really coming from my heart. And I remember I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but if you want this for me, then I want it. My life has never been the same since that moment. That, that I experienced the presence of God, that, that God came upon me and I, I felt his presence. Uh, God was personal. God wasn't just this, some distant God that I had heard about. God was, was terribly, intimately personal. I felt, I felt his presence come upon me. I felt like I was being enveloped by, by God's presence. So I felt his love, and, and his love was, again, it was personal. It wasn't just he loved the world, but that he loved me, and there was this peace and this presence that, that changed me, that changed me forever. From that moment, I, I can say that I've never been the same from that. At that moment, I began to just pray quietly, and I was just saying, Lord, I love you. And, and then I began to pray in the Spirit. I prayed in tongues, and, and I didn't exactly understand what that was, and it kind of freaked me out. But, but I understand now, when Romans 8, it says that, that in our weakness, we pray in utterances that we don't understand, and the Spirit prays through us. And that's exactly what happened to me. Nobody had to teach me about it or, or explain it to me. It's just the presence of God was upon me, and, and I was different. I mean, I... Every, everything was different in my spiritual life. Like the next day when I was reading the scriptures, they came alive. I would read scriptures that I'd read before, and, and, and they came alive. For God so loved the world that he sent his only... That made sense to me, huh? That we are children of God. That made sense to me. Uh, John 6 and the, blessed, and the the Eucharistic text, it just... The scriptures came alive in a way that never had before. And, and again, I was faithful. I was an active, uh, active Catholic, and it was just different, huh? I remember a couple of days after this event, I found this guy again. And I said to him, I said, you know, if, if you want to pray for me for baptism in the Holy Spirit, that's, I'm open to that now. And he's like, what do you mean? He goes, it happened. It happened to you. He goes, I don't know when, but I can tell that, that you're different. God has done a great thing in your life, and you're different. Maybe a couple of weeks went by, and I finally thought, you know, I, something's got to happen here. Something's got to give. And uh, one night at... Uh, Three o'clock in the morning after a concert in Indianapolis, Indiana, I was in a hotel room by myself, and I, I got this little Hal Lindsey book out, and it's basically a, a pretty clever little gospel tract, you know, dressed up as a book on a different subject. And I was, I was kind of sk skimming through it, and I, I, you know, he had these little diagrams of what Jesus, uh, what he did on the cross actually meant, who he actually was. And it got to the part where, uh, you know, Hal Lindsey said something like, if, if he was actually raised from the dead, what does that mean? That means he's alive right now as you're reading this. And that hit me like a train. And uh, I guess what happened, I, I kind of surrendered. You know, I've been searching for God so long, I was weary. Didn't want to be, be a Christian, but I said, I got on my knees and I, I surrendered. And I said, if, if this is true, then I don't care if I don't like it. I want the truth. And at that moment... Uh, I became somebody different. Totally, totally changed me. Fulfilled. I knew everything I'd ever been looking for had been found. And uh, that was 20-some years ago. And I'm still sitting here talking about it. I was sitting there that Sunday, um, which up to that point, you know, I went to church because, you know, my dad was going to church and my brother and I would go to Sunday school and I was there for the donuts and to hear the cool stories and, you know, uh, we'd sit in, in the main church and my brother and I would just kind of mess around the whole time and not really pay attention. But for some reason, uh, this Sunday was different. Um, again, for five weeks, I had been on crutches, feeling sorry for myself, 
sports have been up on my identity, and I was sitting there asking myself, is this really, is this really what life is all about? And at that moment, I'm sitting there listening to our pastor speak about uh, God looking for a few good men um, to lead. And at that moment, Jesus reached in and, and grabbed my heart and, and made me feel like, you know what, I'm one of those few good men. And uh, my life was transformed after that. Um, that, that, uh, that, that a very calming influence came over to me. And I knew that um, God had a plan for me. And um, whether it involved sports or not, um, it didn't matter because uh, I was being called to live my life for Him, and that gave me uh, great peace. And um, uh, from then on, I knew that you know I was going to trust in God's plan. Um, one of my favorite verses, Second Corinthians five seven: "I'll be led by faith and not by sight." Um, I think at the time, and for most people, you were such visual people. We, we, we want to be able to see, we want to be able to predict, we want to be able to you know feel like we're in control um, of our lives, and we're the ones making the decisions. And yet, um, um, Proverbs 16.9 will tell you that uh, your heart will make plans, but the Lord will direct your steps. Um, I think God has given us all great talents, abilities, strengths um, uh, to go a certain direction. And yet, our point A to B is not God's point A to B. Um, he wants us to get there, but he's probably just going to lead us on a little bit different path to get there. And that path is going to be presented with great opportunities and also great challenges. But those are there in our life to mold us strengthen us um, and shape us into who God meant for us to be and I think now with Jesus in my life in my heart I know that no matter what happens it's all part of God's plan and it gives me great confidence it also gives me great certainty to know that I know where the end point is with Jesus um, and I know that the path and the journey there is there to strengthen me and make me stronger this time they didn't say much. I said, what's wrong with you? And they said, oh, yeah, my friends died in the fire. And they just asked me, would you mind if we pray for you? I'm with you. And I said, okay. And all I remember is that I started getting, first I got cold, then I got warm, then I started sweating a lot and shaking a little bit. And at the end, they just both asked me, if, uh, you know, how I feel. And I said, I feel, I never felt like this before in my entire life. They asked me, you know, are you ready to accept Jesus Christ as your, your Lord and Savior? Because you know, that's the only way that you ever will feel this way again. And I was absolutely yes. And that, that's how I got saved. And then, like I said, the next day I never smoked or drank, smoked a cigarette or drank a beer or any alcohol. I don't drink alcohol for uh, 10 or 12 years now. And uh, my whole life changed. His wife, Johanna, then shared a secret with him. My wife was saved the same week, and I didn't know about it. Peter got involved in the praise team at church and formed a Christian band called Four Inch Nails. He hopes to use a celebrity to share his faith with other rockers. I have a unique position because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach people that nobody would go to reach. No one wants heavy metal fans, you know, you know most people, they let them go to hell. They're already there. But it really is not the music, and most of them don't even know what they're following. Peter says he often thinks back to the day he was saved. I was broken. I felt like I was broken to the point where uh, there was no, I, I don't know where to go. You know, I was famous. I'm supposed to be powerful. I was nothing. I was a zero. I, I know now that at that particular moment that you're ripe, that you're ready, that only at that moment you can truly accept Christ. You can't do it when you're, when you're full of pride or it just doesn't work.